All right. <clears throat> so here is uh, up top here. We have uh, a Shimao site in China, an ancient, uh, I think it's like almost 5,000 year old, maybe 4,500 year old city. Um, and so that's in China. This one down below is in Belize. It's a uh, pre-classical Maya um, site. And you can see there's similar um, sort of, you know, faces on the outside of the uh, temple and kind of what look like almost random squiggles uh, on flanking the faces or the main face, uh, but actually are probably very significant, uh, you know, cosmological shapes. And <clears throat> let's see, and the, and the presence of multiple faces, you know, above and below in both uh, suggests to me, I mean, I think this Mayan site uh, is heavily influenced by uh, China, ancient China and probably prehistoric China. I'm just gonna mostly deal with my own uh, comparisons that I've made since I know probably a little more about those. Um, see, so up top here is uh, Osiris and um, he's, it's, I believe, Osiris during the flood. Um, basically when he was attacked by Seth, who is storm god, and Osiris is a land god, like, uh, yeah, like an earth god and land god. And so he was attacked and Seth attacked him with water. And basically it was a great storm and a flood. And uh, Osiris was submerged uh, for the most part underwater. And was, uh, and then Isis and uh, Nephthys came to uh, to his aid and you know tried to find him under the water and uh, bring him out um, so that's up top and we see uh, probably Isis and Nephthys uh, one at either end there and he's in this uh, Kind of a sar sarcophagus type thing, but it's like um, <clears throat> has a plant growing through it. I think uh, it's a tree called the Erica tree um, growing through it, and uh, I, you know, I think this is all very cosmological and. Either it has to do with uh, actual flood that happened, or it's something celestial that's being kind of portrayed as a flood. Um, and then in the middle picture here, we have, uh, let's see, Vishnu. So this is, I think, Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, 
And so Vishnu is on the bottom and flanked by, uh, I guess, Lakshmi and I forget the other one. And has uh, probably um, Brahma growing uh, kind of out of the lotus coming out of his navel. And uh, <clears throat> Brahma is kind of Horus, you know, in the Egyptian, would be Horus. And then on the bottom, we have Buddha at, in Myanmar, you know, uh, aka Burma. Um, and there's a, a kind of temple coming up out of, uh, or I don't know if you call it stupa or uh, um, kind of temple towers coming up out from the top of uh, the kind of whatever structure the Buddha is in there. And I think that might uh, be an equivalent of the, um, the uh, you know, both the Arica tree in with um, Osiris and the um, Brahma uh, Lotus with Vishnu. Because these are all cosmological, like the like Horus and and uh, Brahma, like seem to represent basically the different directions, and you know similarly these type of types of uh, of temple towers um, represent you know cosmological uh, divisions and directions. So, you know, these are, um, I mean, the Buddha is recognized as being the, as being Vishnu, I, I suppose, as being uh, one of the avatars of Vishnu um, by a lot of people in Asia. And, uh, so, but the connection with Osiris, I'm not the first to discover it. Uh, others have noticed the the, uh, the many similarities as well. So there's that. Um, Well, here we have, uh, you know, uh, se seemingly similar or the same deity that has a uh, a bird with a uh, open mouth and <clears throat> and kind of tufts on the top of its head, um, you know, on the top of the the, the god's head, and. Um, and seems to maybe in both cases that the bird on the top of their head has something in their mouth. Uh, it's harder to tell in the Japanese case. Okay, so this is from China. This is a uh, bronze, you know, um, ancient bronze uh, vessel. 
and I'm just focusing on the shapes on the top, the uh, kind of upward pointing semi triangular uh, shapes um, on the very top of it and and the fact that these vessels generally were um, uh, you know anthropomorphic and zoomorphic so even though it's not necessarily immediately apparent there's probably a face on this uh, you know that there's I think one eye is uh, possibly visible here. I think I see another eye right here. This might be a nose and mouth here. Uh, that's what I would guess. And, that, and then this is like a kind of crown or headdress or hair or horns or something. Um, so then uh, we have a similar kind of thing uh, here with Tlaloc, uh, Aztec rain god uh, associated with often with the east, eastern the eastern underworld, uh, Tlalocan, and uh, which would essentially be Asia is the eastern underworld for Americans. Um, but I'm basically looking at these shapes in the middle and seeing how similar or basically identical they are. And uh, so that's the main uh, clear connection in this. But I mean, it's part of multiple uh, connections between ancient China, both Bronze Age and Neolithic China, and um, ancient Mesoamerica. Um, this is a very ancient Chinese uh, temple or uh, I guess they call it an altar, but I would call it a temple. In um, yeah, it's in China. It's the Shang Shang Dynasty, or I'm not sure of the pronunciation. S H A N G uh, Dynasty uh, culture, and then there's a Buddhist uh, uh, mandala which has. I think the same number of uh, divisions as that temple did. So it may be that uh, a lot of the Buddhist mandala tradition came from the Bon uh, Himalayan people, pre-Buddhist Himalayans uh, who were who may have been influenced by Chinese culture, ancient Chinese culture, going back to the Shang Dynasty or before. And, uh, and I think this is all cosmological, like this is a, both a map of the cosmos and a calendar. Um, you know, the different directions and different, uh, you know, uh, constellations, planets, and um, parts of the Earth, which are also are associated with different seasons. Uh, so that was kind of all tied together in almost every ancient culture. See here, I'm not sure if this is a real connection or not, but I saw just the shape on this uh, Mississippian, pre-Columbian, uh, American uh, artifact up top. It's like a boat and there's some kind of shape uh, in front of the rower. And I was comparing that to, I guess, this uh, large goddess or whatever this is that's uh, on the, the Egyptian boat 
from the Nakata period, basically Chalcolithic uh, period, Neolithic, Chalcolithic, Egypt's pre-dynastic. Um, and so there might be some connection there, there might be no connection, I'm not, not really sure. A lot of things I just uh, follow up if there's a chance of something, because enough of those tend to lead to something eventually. Uh, this here we have, um, let's see. Um, we have to make it smaller actually, fit it in here. Yeah. All right, so uh, this is from ancient China. Uh, Kijia. So it's, I guess, from associated with either a place called Kijia or a culture called Kijia. Kijia or something. And then this is. Uh, an Olmec uh, mask from Mexico. These are both masks, and both of these are made out of jade. And there's a good chance that both of the orange part are made out of, uh, are colored with cinnabar. But that I'm not sure. Um, so, you know, there's clearly very similar, you know, I can't, I don't know enough about this, but if all this can be verified as, as legit, then this is a very, uh, you know, probable connection because it's such a random, uh, configuration, you know, the, the, uh, orange color on jade just above the uh, eyes. Let's see, here is Tlaloc. Um, the rain god, um, let's see, Mayan, Kijia, hey. Okay, so I guess this is Kijia and this is Shijia, hey. These are both from China, uh, either Neolithic or, or Bronze Age. And uh, these are mixed tech apparently i'm not sure if they're both mixed tech no this okay this one is mayan this one is mixed tech i think this is from the yucatan where a lot of uh, the mayan sites have a lot of uh, mexican or you know not mexican but yeah like well, it's actually, essentially, yeah, um, uh, Mexico Valley influence. And so this, um, their Tlaloc is characterized by these round, always big round eyes and uh, downward pointing teeth coming out of his mouth and often has uh, big earrings and uh, strange features in general, but but the biggest things are the eyes and the mouth. That's those are the really uh, distinguishing features to recognize uh, Tlaloc in the ancient art. So basically, this is these Chinese um, you know representations are the origin. I mean, I think Tlaloc is from China. I think there were different branches. I'm not sure if the original, if it was originally Kijia or 
Shijia He or um, <clears throat> uh, Liang Shu, because all those different cultures and also uh, San, San, Sing, San Sing Dui, they all have uh, elements of what became Tlaloc in Mesoamerica or what was Tlaloc in, in Mesoamerica or among the Aztecs. Uh, so, and since the Chinese uh, artifacts are much older, uh, we, I, I tend to assume uh, a um, eastward moving uh, diffusion. Uh, this shows Gobekli Tepe, uh, enclosure D, which has 12 uh, stones going around it and two in the middle. And I compared it to this uh, Buddhist mandala, which also has, I think, 12 of these little uh, sections. And then has these two figures, at least in the middle, which is also similar. <clears throat> and I think these were all cosmological uh, maps of maps of the Earth, the cosmos, the galaxy, and time. Like they were also calendars. Um, so I think this seems to be that, as Andrew Collins has uh, has theorized, uh, the whole sighting stone of Gobekli Tepe points to. Uh, pointed to uh, Deneb or, you know, various um, pole stars. And let's see, this is another, uh, the earlier mandala and a uh, zodiac chart, which is div divided into 12. So this may be all uh, on the same basis. The procession of the equinox and, uh, oh, I guess, so this is how I put them together. Um, so it could be that all these things do overlap with the zodiac. Uh, there's a good chance of that. And in that sense, they are maps of the seasons and the cosmos, including the earth and uh, heavenly bodies. And That's that's another version of Tlaloc uh, chalk. In uh, that's Mayan. This is by my friend Luca Luca Zampi. Um, so he has a very interesting uh, nose. And and the Chinese one there is at uh, San Sing Dui, which is a. Uh, Bronze Age, uh, one of the first kind of major Bronze Age sites in China, um, with a lot of quite extraordinary uh, pieces similar to that one. Let's see, these are, I suppose, feather. Um, feather uh, dresses or gowns or I'm not sure what they would be called but uh, clothes made out of uh, feathers in Sumer and uh, Aztec on the right so the three on the left are all Sumerian 
and uh, looking at the central one that actually has a color suggests that maybe they were all meant to be uh, that color, uh, basically turquoise or green or light green, and uh, which is not so far from the the Tlaloc figure, uh, the Aztec figure to the right, which has seems to be also wearing a, a feather attire that's light blue, so, you know, not too far in color. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so this is more Tlaloc's, uh, this one, this is the one from Shijiahe. And then these are all from Mesoamerica. This is the Mayan one. And this one I think is Aztec. Uh, this one, uh, these three are probably all Aztec. And then this one is Mayan. Uh, this one might be Mixtec. Yeah, I think maybe this one is mixed tech here. Um, but same deity, you know, the same teeth coming down, same eyes, uh, round eyes, earrings um, in China and in Mesoamerica. Uh, this. This I'm not totally sure. Like this looks a bit modern, but it might be, if it is modern, it might, it might be based on an earlier one because sometimes there's replicas done of, of ancient art. Uh, but I just thought it was similar in some way, the layered uh, shapes and, and the uh, white jade with the, um, you know, light green or blue, greenish blue eyes. Um, so, let's see what else we got. I guess I'll just do a few more. My voice is apparently not uh, doing so great. Let's see. Uh, so here's two more Tlalocs. This one is Shijiahe from China and, uh, you know, from like 4,000 years ago or so or more. This one is uh, from Tenochtitlan. Not sure how to pronounce that exactly, but the Aztec capital of Mexico City, uh, Tenochtitlan. Um, so you have the same big round eyes and weird mouth with the fangs coming out and big earrings and in this case they're both actually uh, similarly shaped vessels with uh, you know tall heads or, or hats kind of uh, that uh, are kind of flare out at the top and uh, this is Tlaloc. Um, yeah, I think this this is Tlaloc with his eyes, big eyes, and his downward pointing teeth. This is from China, Liangshu, um, and I think it's related. I don't. I'm not exactly sure if what all of this signifies, specifically the different, uh, if these are just different manifestations of Tlaloc or if they signify different uh, deities or phenomena, but, but it seems to all tie in with Tlaloc. Um, and so 
that this figure here is, although this figure is also, I think he's referred to as the Jaguar God. So I think there's different uh, interpretations of whether this is Tlaloc or whether this is a Jaguar or, both, or perhaps both. Um, and, but I think there's a similar figure here, kind of jaguar, dragon, Tlaloc type figure, um, doing a similar thing, like maybe drinking out of this thing. But it's so abstract that it's very difficult to, I'm not sure where the eyes are. Maybe this is, this could be an eye, this could be the eye here. It's very abstract, so it's um, not as easy to recognize as this one at uh, Teotihuacan in uh, uh, Tempantitla, uh, what is it? Tempantitla Temple, or I mean uh, Palace in Teotihuacan. <clears throat> and then this is uh, again from Liangshu, I believe, or no. And this is from San Singdui. Okay, and then this is Liangshu. And See, this is, uh, this is an ancient Egyptian armor palette that's taken as uh, showing evidence that King Narmer, like, you know, killed all these people and, and was this conqueror. But here I'm, sh I'm comparing it to later books of the dead and showing that, um, you know, these like sideways bodies, sometimes headless, sometimes not. Uh, these are normal parts of their, you know, funerary texts and their cosmological, uh, you know, pictographs or whatever. And um, so I think a lot of what a lot of what is taken for evidence of brutality in ancient art is really just, uh, you know, sim symbolic. It's like religious, it's showing like, uh, you know, activities between deities, and uh, and ultimately it's showing natural. Well, it's usually showing natural events. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there since my voice is not the best right now, but um, thank you very much and take care.